Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. We're covering section 7.2 now of Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics. This is Faraday's Law. If I go too fast, you can always rewind. If you have any questions, uh, you can make a video response or comments below. Um, so, um, oftentimes people jump right into Faraday's Law and they don't really understand the motivation of why it, why it, why it is the way it is. It, um, you know, Faraday, indeed, in Faraday's day, um, the idea of relativity, the idea that, you know, um, changing the reference velocity shouldn't change the results of the, the experiment was was a, was a concept that just really didn't exist back then you know um, so he he did experiments and, and he was able to uncover the law just by simple observation of, of how changing magnetic fields affect uh, loops circuits so uh, but we've shown that the loop is moving in a, in a steady magnetic field and we get an inductance. We get we get a current flowing through the thing. Um, and we found the the formula called the flux rule that the EMF is equal to negative the change in the magnetic flux over time. Okay. Um, this is true not just for uh, static magnetic fields and moving loops, but for static loops and changing magnetic fields or when everything's all in motion together. All you have to really do is track the change in the magnetic flux and you'll get the electromagnetic inductance. Okay, this is actually uh, Faraday's law in integral form. Okay, where's the integral? Well, actually the E. So we get integral over some closed loop of the E vector dot DL vector has to equal negative the change in magnetic flux over time. Okay. That's these are the same equations. That's just that's just the e, the electromotive force there. Um, so we can turn this into the differential form using Stokes theorem. So this becomes um, the surface integral of the surface bounded by that loop of the curl of the vector dot da and this becomes well d phi by the the magnetic flux this is just t of the magnetic flux which is b vector dot da vector okay which uh, becomes uh, move this on the inside you get negative uh, d dot da vector and then so now it's readily apparent that you have this has to equal negative that, so you get the curl of E has to equal negative the change in the magnetic field. This is uh, Faraday's law in differential form. Okay, so integral form, differential form. Okay. Um, The interesting thing is that you, you could think of the changing magnetic field or flux inspiring yet a new um, field, um, you know, per unit, uh, a force, some force per unit charge. And if you were to call that the G field, right, whatever you want to call it, then Lorentz's law uh, becomes Q E plus G plus uh, V cross B, right? That's the newer Lorentz's law um, because the the activity of this this field due to the change in the magnetic field um, is just added like that. And you, as you can see, rather than think of these as two sep uh, separate ones, you just add those together and you get E. You know. So, um, but anyway, that's interesting. Um, and y if you were to use a G field, there's some interesting you know things that you'd get. The divergence of G uh, has to equal zero. Um, and you can still maintain that the divergence of E, the E sans G without the G is, is uh, I'm sorry, the curl of that is always equal to zero as well. Um, so it's interesting, but it's not, not extraordinarily useful. It's just easier to, to say now the E has a curl. That's the change in the magnetic field. Okay. Um, the interesting thing is when you really think about what this means is, so imagine you have, you know, some fiddly loop out here doing his little business. And then you had, you know, some fiddly uh, loop over here, doing his business, creating magnetic field, and you know, so you have your your little magnetic field doing whatever it does, right? And this loop changes or moves or whatever. And this thing, it doesn't, it can't see 
this loop. What it does see is the magnetic field that occurs at the, the portion of the loop. And this thing responds in such a way to react to the, the changes here, but really what it's reacting to, um, the long and the short of it, is the magnetic field, the change of the magnetic field. That's all it can really see um, if, you think of, if you think of physics as a local phenomenon where um, you know particles don't pull out telescopes and look halfway across the universe to decide what to do. All they know is about the stuff around them. Um, so um, it's it's kind of you know it's kind of curious that when you when you think of things that way, ultimately the magnetic field, like the electric field, is is a crutch that we introduce to make it easier to calculate the forces, um, for the force that one current has on another current. You know, ultimately the rule is that currents that flow in the same direction attract, and currents that flow in the opposite direction repel. Um, that's the the ultimate source of of you know magnetic fields are the things that we use to to mediate the force. Um, you know, we say this current creates a magnetic field, and then the magnetic field interacts with the other current, and that's where we get the, the forces. Um, so it's it's just kind of curious when you think about things that way. Um, Lenz's law. So Lenz's law tells you the direction, um, and Lenz's law is actually really simple. Yeah, all it says is that if if there's a current produced by a changing magnetic field, it'll be in such a direction to try to maintain the magnetic field. Okay, so basically. Um, uh, the, the general rule of thumb is that nature abhors a changing magnetic field. You know, it's going to try to do what it can to recreate the existing magnetic field, try to keep things the way they always were. Um, that's, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting when you think of nature having this, this psyche, this, this motive, uh, this personality that, that demands that, you know, it tries to keep magnetic fields constant. So anyway, um, that's basically what works. Let's, let's talk about some examples and then let's continue on the section. Thanks for your time. Bye.